And at last, we're at the last part. The last part of all of this is part C. This has been one large problem that we've done. We've done the first part, which was uh, in the first video of this series. The second part, part B, we did in the second video of this series, and now we're finally at C. Yes. All right. So, what do we have here? Okay, you guys can't quite see the very bottom of this, but I'll tell you what we got. Okay, so calculate the pH of a buffer solution with 0.1 molar of pyridine and 0.15 molar of the acid. All right, so what information are we given? We want the pH. This could be called random variations on pH calculations. <laughs> like a series of poems or music or something. I like it. All right, so what are we doing? We got 0.1 molar of pyridine. And we got 0.15 molar of, of its protonated form, which is the acid, right? And we also know that the Kb of pyridine is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th, and KB, or Ka is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 5th. All right, have all kinds of information here. What are we going to do with all of this? That's the real question, right? So what are we going to do? In terms of this, what do we have to do is really the question. And this is what we want to do, OK? When you're given an initial amount of both an acid and a base, and at least one K, what you are going to use to find the pH, and it, the key phrase here that you want to be looking out for to know that you're using this equation is the fact that it says a buffer solution, right? You're given an amount of the acid and the base, and it, you're told that it's a buffer. If it's a buffer, folks, you're using the Henderson-Hasselbach, which is awesome. The henderson hasselbach has two forms. It has this form, and it has, you can actually do the exact same thing with the pOH, if you have a pKb, and you just flip this last expression. Okay, so which one do we want to use? You can use either. We have all kinds of information here, but the one I'm going to use is the more standard of the two, which is the henderson hasselbach that just finds pH for you. OK, so let's use that. And let me go ahead and erase this top part. I know it's been a long and luxurious, fabulous problem, but I think I'm ready to use this space now that I have it, OK? Because I have lots and lots of things to do. OK, you could use an ice table here, by the way. The change in x would be, uh, you'd have to think through it a bit more in terms of the change in x, because the change in x would have to be one of these um, amounts in terms of moles. And you'd have to convert things into maybe some moles or molarity. That's fine. But it would be a little bit different than what you're used to. So let's go ahead and plug it into the henderson hasselbach which is the way easier way to go pH equals pKa. Now, what is pKa? pKa, just like P is for everything else, is the negative log of the Ka. Negative log of Ka plus the log of A minus over HA. So, let's use our amounts here. In terms of our amounts, what we got, we have, and I'm going to erase this stuff, so I can plug it in. Actually, I'm just going to erase all of this. We have, we know the information that we have. It's still written over here. So I just wrote it out in a nice form so that we knew that we had all of that information. But let's go ahead and erase it and use it as we need to. If the henderson hasselbach is going to be this that I've come up with, and all I've done here from the original version is written out the negative log of Ka. 
which is what a pKa is, allows us to not have to think about negative exponents and somehow associate that with what I have. pKa, by the way, is kind of directly proportional in some way, shape, or form to pH. They're not exactly the same, but they tend to go in the same direction. So as the pH gets smaller, it tends to be more acidic. As the pKa gets smaller, then you actually have a larger Ka, which means it's more acidic. OK, that was just a side note. <laughs> Not at all relevant for this particular problem. OK, so in terms of this, pH equals negative log of Ka, the negative log of 6.67 times 10 to the negative fifth, Woo, plus the log of the concentration of the base. You have to figure out which one is the base. We know that pyridine, we already said, was the base. So that's going to be 0.1. And then the acid was 0.15, because that was the protonated version of pyridine. And then I just plugged this into my calculator. Life is pretty good. We would expect with a buffered solution that it wouldn't change very much if you added acid or base. That's the whole point of a buffer. All right, so in terms of this, 6.67 EE negative 5 plus log of 0.1 divided by 0.15. And I got a cool number like, let me, write, let me do that one more time, log 6.67 EE negative 5, which by the way, the pKa is just to give you a value to work with here, 4.176. And then you're going to add this to it, plus the log of 0.1 divided by 0.15. And I got a number like 3.9997. <laughs> That's not going to work out in my favor. 9998 nine, nine, actually. So we're going to call that 4.0. And that is the buffered solution pH. Okay? If I wanted to do more with this, I certainly could. Let's say that I had um, I added some base. Let's let's kind of get a sense of what this means, right? So with the Henderson Hasselbach, if you add acid or base to it, you can totally incorporate that into the calculation, right? So we could do a part D here, which we didn't even write down. But we could say, what would happen if All right. What would happen to this pH? And this is small changes. What would the new pH of the buffer solution be if 0 0.001 molar NaOH were added? to the solution? That's an interesting question. So my original calculation, let's do a win moment here, right? pH is equal to 4.00. We totally calculated that out. Well done. Yay! Time to celebrate, or at least for the moment. <laughs> but let's do this one, too, because it's really interesting. <clears throat> In terms of the buffer, if the buffer starts at 4 and you add a relatively small amount of acid or base, what happens to the buffer, right? So in terms of that, recognize that the best buffers usually have equal amounts of the conjugate acid and the conjugate base, okay? So, and this is... And not exactly equal amounts, but it's kind of the same. Okay, it's, it's close to each other. So if I add 
add base. I add, or let's add a strong base. Let's add base to this side. Let's add something like, we'll just say OH minus here. <coughs> if I add base, then what I have to recognize here is that when you add base, it adds to the base. Okay, so that's kind of what you would expect. Here's my base. I'm going to make it a little taller. Okay, and we're going to do a little moment here so you can see that it's a little taller. Woo, there it is. But it subtracts the same amount from the acid. So there's my 8J. Okay, so it adds to the base. When you add a strong base, it adds to the base but subtract neutralizes out that amount of acid. And the exact opposite is true when you add acid. If you add a strong acid to this, it adds to the acid, right? So let's do a little across the board here. All right, it will add to the acid. Oh, that's a lot of acid that I added to. Sorry. I'm going to have to subtract a lot of base. But it would subtract an equal amount from the base. Okay, and these should technically be all the way, if I were going to do this really well, my bottom parts here should be about the same too. So here we go. Mm, there you go. Okay, so you kind of get the point that when we add base, it adds to A minus and subtracts. from HA. You guys see that? You guys can see that. All right. When I add acid, it adds to the acid, but subtracts from the base. So having said that, now that we're done with our whole problem over here, let's erase that and let's do this calculation over again with the thought that I have now added some base to my original amount. My original amounts, I should say. Okay, so my original calculation as I was doing it here was that I had the K expression. I'm, I'm sorry, not the K expression. <laughs> Sorry, I've been talking too much about pH calculations today. I had the Henderson-Hasselbach, which is what's written right here. All right, Henderson-Hasselbach. Okay, the way this is going to work out is I'm going to have this, ex I'm going to have the same exact equation as I had before. I'm going to put it in my amounts, right, that I had before. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to the acid no, wait, I added base. I'm going to add to the base and subtract from the acid. What it'll look like is this. pH equals pKa plus the log, and your whatever your concentration of OH minus is, A minus is going to add that amount of OH minus, that concentration, and HA is going to subtract out that amount of OH minus. All right, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's do it. pH equals pKa. We know it was the negative log of um, 6.67, which we calculated as 4.176, right? 4.176 was my pKa. And then log, we know that this was 0.1 to begin with. So we're going to take 0.1 and add to it 0 0.001. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And from the 0.15 that I had, I'm going to subtract out 0 0.001. And I'm going to get a cool pH here. And it should not change very much my original 4, right? So in terms of this, I'm going to take 
my pKa and add to it the log base 10 of 0.1 plus 0 0.001 divided by 0.15 minus 0 0.001 and I get a number like 4. <laughs> so instead of 3.9997 it actually came out as 4. It was actually 4.01 because there's a 7 right next to that second zero. 4.01 which is a ridiculously small change right? You just added some strong base not a whole, whole lot, but some. And the buffered system absorbed that change. And that is really due to the Le Chatelier AI principle in terms of it absorbed that change because while it added to the base, it neutralized the same amount of the acid, which forced the reaction to the opposite side, basically. Okay, so it disrupted an equilibrium that was already in existence, and when it disrupted that equilibrium, the buffered solution, the system moved to change in a way that would minimize that disruption. And that is why buffers work the way they do. Next time, we might talk about some more in terms of buffers, but until then, I shall bid you adieu. Adieu.